Ah yes, A Hat in Time. The game about collecting hourglasses and fighting with birds, goats, and giant purple pool noodles. Well, that's not exactly how the game goes, but it's honestly not a bad summary. However, inside this fun little game, there's always been one mechanic that always stood out to me. The hats. Throughout the many worlds of A Hat in Time, there are several pieces of yarn scattered about. By collecting a set amount of said yarn, you can craft special hats for a hat kid to equip. These can range from simple little things like the ability to run and throw little projectiles to literally stopping the flow of time. So as you can see, these hats can be pretty useful, but what would happen if this power was stripped away from you? Well, that's what I attempted to do over two years ago, and we figured out that it is indeed possible, with an older version of the game that is. However, that video is, well, let's just say, ahead of its time. So, to go in tandem with the whole 5 year anniversary thing that I'm doing, I decided to remake the entirety of the video. This has easily been the most passionate I've been since the original Indie Cross video when it comes to a YouTube video, so I hope you all are ready. I am so excited to be remaking this. However, I am slightly tweaking the rules from the last time because, eh, they were just okay. Everything is basically the same, except for how I'm treating the badges. Last time, I said that badges were completely fair game, but this time, I'm including the additional challenge that bans them. This makes it so that it will have a different outcome from the last video, so some people might actually want to watch this one. And also, it makes it a bit more difficult, because last time, we didn't really get to do anything fun until the very end, so, you know, this will hopefully spice things a little bit. But, with that being said, let's go ahead and start the challenge. Can you beat a hat in time without hats? Let's find out. Just like last time, let's discuss what we need in order to uh, beat the game. Firstly, we shall be playing on version 1.0 of the game. Not only does this add a plethora of glitches for us to use, but it also allows us to get past the hat check at the end of the game, since after this version, the gate is too large for us to jump over. Since there's no DLC in this early version, that means there's only four main worlds for us to collect timepieces in. Mafia Town, Battle of the Birds, Subcon Forest, and Alpine Skyline. To unlock the final mustache gauntlet, we need 25 timepieces in total, so we have our work cut out for us here. Also, just in case it's needed, I'll be collecting all of the core hats, including the sprint hat for mobility, brewing for destroying these little boxes, ice for these little ice platforms, and the dweller's mask for these little platforms. Now, for those of you who've actually played a hat in time before, you may notice that I left out the time stop hat from that list. Well, there's a few reasons I decided not to try and get that one, but for now, just know it's not that important to the run. But, with the game plan set, it's officially time to start! In said Mafia Town, we have our sights pretty much set on everything, which includes all seven main acts, the two blue rifts, and the purple rift. To even unlock the next stage, Battle of the Birds, we need four timepieces, so we can only hope that these levels are a piece of cake. And luckily for us, they kinda are. Welcome to Mafia Town, She Came From Outer Space, and the Golden Vault are great missions to get used to the weird way of controlling, since usually you would use the sprint hat to go out anywhere. But now you just kinda have to walk, or spin dive everywhere, but I digress. While Barrel Battle and Down with the Mafia are great warm ups to the combat. Heating up in Mafia Town and the two blue rifts available are really the only things that we've seen so far that can be considered a challenge, but they're still not too hard. Cheating the race is still pretty much impossible without the use of the time stop hat, so no timepiece there. And for some reason, I never got the complete burger for the purple rift to spawn, so we're missing two timepieces from this area in total. This brings our count up to eight, which is more than enough to unlock the next level. For some reason, the devs for this game decided that each world would have a different way of progression. While Mafia Town is a much more traditional, Mario 64-ish style of missions, Subcon Forest has the contract mechanic, and Alpine Skyline is a complete open world where you can collect the timepieces in whatever order you want. As for Battle of the Birds? Well, unfortunately for us, it is a much more linear level with the missions being split between the two main antagonists of the level, that being the Conductor and DJ Grooves. 
The first timepiece for both Deadbird Studios and both of the split paths are simple enough, being just a slight step up in difficulty from the things we've been dealing with so far. Although, I do quickly need to shout out the Murder on Owl Express mission, since there are a few key parts that are pretty important to the run. Firstly, I speed ran the level. Okay, normally this level is really annoying, but I figured out a way to get to the end in like a minute, and I am honestly proud because I did not know some of these jumps were even possible, but they are, so it's pretty cool. However, we do actually run into a problem on this level. Specifically, we have to get past this ice jump. After collecting this key, we need to find a way to get past this giant gap back to the door. Luckily, you can just backtrack to the door, so it's not that big of a problem. However, the first roadblock shortly reveals itself. Train Rush. Since the Hookshot badge is required to progress in this mission, we are effectively locked out of not only this timepiece, but also the two award ceremony timepieces and the second blue rift, meaning that only six of the ten total timepieces can be unlocked in this area. Hopefully this doesn't throw a massive wrench into our plans. But, with that little hiccup out of the way, it's time to move on to my personal favorite world of this entire game. Even though this is my favorite world, this one's still gonna be pretty rough. Alright, let's just get the easy stuff out of the way first. Contractual obligations, Vanessa's Manor, and both the first Blue Rift and Purple Rift are obtainable pretty easily. But, on the complete other hand, we have the absolute nightmare that is the Subcon Well. <sighs> okay, let's go over this one. So, this is where we first unlock the Hookshot Badge, and the well is basically acts as a tutorial teaching the player how it works. Unfortunately for us, we can't use it, as the run declares we are not allowed to use any badges, so we're gonna have to find another way around this one. We can make it out of the starting room pretty easily with some tight jumps on these ice pillars, but the main well room is where we really struggle. So, for us to escape normally, we need the water to begin rising, which only happens when you pull on this lever using the hookshot. Since we can't do that, we need to find a way up here. To make matters even worse, once you leave the ground level, there's a massive invisible wall that leads from the bottom of this platform almost to the very top of the well. I theorycrafted a few methods from both my own mind as well as some internet searches, but I wasn't able to complete most of them. I managed to eventually get up here using the glitch where attacking somehow allows you to climb invisible walls, but I didn't actually know where to go from there and accidentally fell. The method I eventually ended up using came exactly from Akin Labs from Twitch. There's some weird sliding physics, and that kid is literally floating at one point on an invisible wall, but eventually you can actually make it to the top. If you don't want to put in the time of doing a full hatless run, I genuinely suggest trying to do this mission without the hookshot. It is honestly the most fun I had throughout the entire run. Again, shout out to Akin Labs for coming up with this route. I will leave a link to his Twitch in the description below. But now, time to move on to... Well, let's just say we have an issue. Once we finally escape from the well, we have a giant problem on our hands. The rest of Subcon Forest seems pretty much impossible. The second blue rift has a jump that looks pretty much like a game ender without using the hookshot, and delivery service is the only time in the entire game where the sprint hat is required, since we need to use the scooter badge. Using the janky apples in the subcon village, I was able to just barely make it over to the boss arena, but once the Toilet of Doom moves on to the phase 2, both apple attacks just cannot be completed without the hookshot, effectively soft locking us. And without those two being completable, your contract has expired is locked permanently. With this being set in stone, we only get 5 of the total 9 pieces in subcon, which puts us at a total of 19 timepieces. Not shabby, but we need 25 in total to unlock the final fight with Mustache Girl, meaning we're off to Alpine Skyline. Which is what I would say if I wasn't an idiot! If you didn't know, to traverse Alpine, you need to use the Hookshot Badge to get from mountain to mountain, which we obviously can't do. This means that literally every single timepiece tied to Alpine is not obtainable without a copious amount of badge uses. This leaves us in a pretty tight position. We can either find a way to get one of the rifts on board the ship, attempt to beat cheating the race without cheating, 
or somehow find a way to glitch our way through either Subcon or Battle of the Birds. This is where the 1.0 craziness really starts coming in handy, so let's go through our options one by one. The mailroom and lab seem completely unreachable unless there's some massive glitch to get by this wall or up this tube that I'm unaware of, but the art room is actually very possible, which is ironic since it's the one that I highlighted in my last video. With some diving shenanigans, you can clip right through one of these boxes, and by spamming jump, you can get on top and dive straight past the other one. The rift itself is actually pretty easy, so we nab that timepiece and bring our total up to 20. Cheating the race is a different story, however. After hours of trying to beat the mission without using time stop with perfect jumps, I officially declared defeat and sought for help on the internet. There were actually quite a few videos of people beating the race without time stop, and luckily for me, there was even a few that did it without the sprint hat. This officially brings our total up to a whopping 21, which, while impressive, still means that we need four more timepieces before we can attempt the final level. So let's lay out the dilemma. Since Alpine is completely off the table, we can really only accept defeat, which now means that we have to figure out which option is better for our purposes today. Luckily for us, both the worlds we have left can get us to 25 timepieces. So we have to choose whether we tank the hit in Train Rush and hope nothing else goes wrong, or finish Toilet of Doom, Delivery Service, The Other Blue Rift, and Your Contract Has Expired has no problems in the boss fight. Which, when putting it that way, it is pretty obvious what the answer is here. So, with a sad heart, I bit the bullet and went for Train Rush. Even after we unlock the starting door to Train Rush, our troubles do not end. Not only is Train Rush way more difficult without the use of the Sprint Hat, there's also quite a few areas where the hookshot is required to make it across large gaps. With some tricky jumps, we can skip the majority of them, but a few just seem impossible. So, we add one, two, three, and four badges to the counter. Yes, I'm using a separate counter for the badges, because they are lesser than the full hat uses in my opinion, and it'll just make the video look more uniform. After submitting DJ Grooves as our winner, we collect our first of two timepieces we get from the final act, award ceremony, and bring our total up to 23. At this point, the next blue rift opens up, and while the hookshot looks to be required, by jumping back further into the level multiple times, you can just skip the need to use the badge, allowing us to collect our 24th timepiece. The real award ceremony is the last roadblock between us and Mustache Girl, and similarly to Train Rush, there are quite a few areas that require hookshots to make it across. Near the start, there are these four hanging pillars that you need to swing across to make it to the door, and while I was able to skip the fourth one with a tight dive, the first three are unfortunately impossible, at least to me. There is one room closer to the end that makes it seem like hookshotting is the only answer, but by using this whiteboard, you can just barely make it across. Luckily, the DJ Grooves fight is pretty straightforward, allowing us to grab our final timepiece and start the trek to the end of the game. Now we get to the whole reason we started this playthrough on version 1.0. After the quick mustache girl invasion, we gain control of Hat Kid again and can unlock the hat check. For those who don't know what this means, basically, before the final end gauntlet, the game makes you press three buttons that can only be accessed by using the Brewing, Dweller, and Ice Hat. However, for some reason, on version 1 of the game, they made it so that you can just jump over the gate that blocks your path, which we found out the hard way last time but this time, we played it smart. But, with that obstacle out of the way, we finally made it to the part I've still been dreading, the Mustache Gauntlet. Yes, that is the name. Please do not laugh in the comments below. This is basically a test of everything we've done so far, with tons of really tight jumps to avoid hook shots, ice platforms, and even brewing blocks, which have never really been an issue up until now. But, we reached the thing that stopped us last time, the Dweller's Wall. Or, do we? See, normally this wall stops us, but we can't even reach it since we need to use the hookshot to cross this massive jump. But I have one final major glitch up my sleeve. W thank you, speedrunning! By diving right here at the start of the gauntlet, you can clip right out of bounds, and using some weird invisible wall shenanigans, you can reach the literal ceiling of the level. 
Once up there, by doing some precise diving, you can slide all the way through the level, not even having to worry about using hats or badges. Sure, it took me a couple of tries to perfect, but just like that, we reach Mustache Girl. Like most bosses before her, we don't really have to worry about using any abilities during the fight, meaning we can easily destroy her and collect our giant ball of time pieces, officially ending the run. So, is it possible to complete a hat in time without using hats? Well, technically yes, but if you include badges as well, no. Our final total was zero hat uses and seven badges, entirely thanks to the hookshot. With that being said though, I of course have a few announcements and shoutouts as per usual with the end of my videos, so if you don't really care about any of that, then I thank you for your time. But for those of you who are staying, I need to start by shouting out a few people. Again, thank you to Akin Labs for giving me the setup for the subcon well. It was very useful and I could not get anything else to work, so shout out to him. But the second person is actually Witchy Bun Al Albreca? I'm really sorry if I pronounced your name wrong, I am terrible at pronunciations. Who made this Steam post a while ago about Hatless and Badgeless. The information on that post is pretty much exactly the same as this video, even including some theory crafting to getting through Alpine, which if that barrier is broken, the game might actually be beatable, hatless and badgeless. So mad props to them. Links to both the Steam post and Akin Labs Twitch will be in the description below. But on that note, I think this is honestly the perfect way to end the five year anniversary. I know I still have a couple live streams left, and of course, the aforementioned animatic that is taking way longer to make than expected. I don't really have anything else planned, so I thank you guys for sticking with me through it all the way. But time to wrap this up. So if you guys did in fact enjoy this video, please make sure to subscribe. We are so unbelievably close to 500, and that would mean a ton to me. Remember to join my Discord server, it's brand new and we have a ton of fun events planned in the near future, so make sure to go do that, links in the description below. However, with that being said, I hope you all have a great rest of your day, and I will see you next time. Bye!